Hi, welcome to QSIS Control Quick Starts. My name is Jeff Perkins. I'll be your host today. Today's episode is called Arrays of Controls. In this episode, you can expect to learn how to declare an array of controls, how to use discrete controls from those arrays, and how to use those arrays of controls with a loop. Honestly, the key idea is that looping over an array of controls enables efficient and scalable code which is a really great idea. Of course, we're gonna look at this in the text controller, the block controller, and the UCI script, which can be a little tricky. Let's dig in. If you were like me, when I got started in QSIS, I, I would need buttons to do a variety of things. And maybe I needed four buttons to be four uh, buttons to change inputs on a video switcher or something. And the way that I would have done it is very much like this. I would have just made four buttons because I needed, well, four buttons. But one of the things that you figure out at some point is, is you notice this little thing here called count. And the idea is, is whoa, what is that thing about? Well, let's take a deeper look. If I pop into this next one and open it and split the screen so that we can see it all nice. We can write the uh, event handlers pretty much exactly as you would think, right? All I did here was I just increased the count to four, and then I started typing in controls dot btn trigger, and then and then there's this bracket. In fact, the bracket is a clue. What the bracket tells us is that we've actually created an array of controls, and here we are. We're dealing with each of these controls individually. So when I want button number one to do something, there, there it is, and our event handler prints it out, and button two, button three, button four. And so what we see is that we indeed have an array of controls, and we can use them individually, because perhaps we want to do things uh, individually for each button. But usually when we define an array of controls, we want to be clever. And when I say clever, I mean something like this. Now, here we are. We only have five lines of code. And let's split that screen one more time. Five lines of code. And in fact, I've gone ahead and I've made nine trigger buttons. Okay. Um, you saw, you saw a moment ago, we had like 14 lines of code for four buttons. Here I have nine lines of code. Sorry, I have nine buttons and only, what is that? Really? One, two, three, four, five lines of code. So with five lines of code, I'm able to run a for loop. In fact, here is this for loop. Uh, this is the syntax for idx comma ctl now again itx and ctl here is really it's just cluing us into the reality of that we're dealing with an array and arrays are tables and tables are nothing but keys and values they're key value pairs and in an array the key is generally an index or when you have multiple of them you call them indices and the values in the key value pair are controls. So uh, the, the consensus here, the way that everybody pretty much does this is we create these two variables. We call them IDX and CTL. Again, for index uh, comma control in I pairs. I pairs is the appropriate kind of uh, Lua for loop to use on this thing. And so for IDX comma CTL in I pairs on a certain table. And which table is it? It's the array called controls.btn trigger. And so what do we want to do? Well, again, remember the CTL, the value is just the control itself. And those controls have control trees. And one of the things on the control tree is an event handler. So for CTL comma uh, CTL dot event handler, what do we want to do? We want to just do some simple prints here. Uh, and we're going to concatenate in the, the, the index. And so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
I mean, look at that. It's five lines of code to write nine event handlers. The reality is, is I could come back and change this to be 90 buttons and it would still only be the five lines of code. This is what I mean when I say looping over arrays of controls enables you to write scalable, efficient code. It really is a great idea. All right, let's click out of this. Let's click out of this. Let's see the same idea here in the block controller. All right, it's turning on. Doop -doop 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 -doop. Sometimes it takes a second and that's okay. Let's split that screen one more time. And here we are. Um, again, four uh, trigger buttons, four BTN triggers. And we came to controls, we grabbed BTN trigger, we grabbed the event handler, we drug it out, and we made these simple debug prints, just like we did in the other script a second ago. Uh, and we made four of them, and there we are. We have an array of controls, and we are using them all individually. So one more time, four, three, two, one. Yep, there we are. And look, it all printed out just exactly the way we wanted it to print out. Uh, discrete event handler for BTN trigger 4321, exactly the way that we did it a second ago. But still, there's the idea of if we're using an array of controls, we really, really want to use the for loop. Well, let's see how the block controller does it. One more time. And again, I've already set this one up for nine. And let's open it. So here we are and split the screen one more time. So I, I have to tell you, how did I really actually make this is I, I actually copied and pasted the other uh, control script that you saw a second ago and I deleted out the other event handlers. And then I changed uh, on this little dropdown, I changed it from being uh, button trigger uh, number one to being any. And when I did that, um, what happened is the block controller created this little um, local variable called control index. And uh, we'll look at it in just a second, but we have this very simple debug print. And the way that it works is nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It works exactly the way that you think it does. It works like a for loop, it feels like a for loop, it smells like a for loop, but because it's the block controller, it's not actually a for loop. Uh, let's, let's look under the hood. Under the hood, what we can see is that the block controller actually wrote out discrete event handlers for each of these things. Uh, that's kind of interesting, but that's, that's, that's one of the things the block controller does. Uh, is it, it does things not necessarily the way that you would probably intuit the way that it works, but it totally works. There's nothing wrong with this. In fact, um, this is probably still a better way of doing it because while it's, while it's not technically a for loop uh, in the full blown Lua sense, uh, it is the block controller's approximation of a for loop and it gets us that same efficiency and scalability uh, that we're looking for. Albeit, it's an approximation of a proper full-blooded for loop, but it's still, it's a really good way of doing it. Okay, let's get rid of that one and close that. Uh, and so I said that we're gonna also look at the UCI script. So let's open this guy up and let's go to UCIs and let's open our demo here. And I gotta show you something. Uh, the way that I made this, let's go offline for a second. Here it is. It's thinking about it. We're offline. Uh, the way that do to do to do to do to do the way that UCI uh, work is if you go to the toolbox and if you drag in these buttons. I mean, in fact, this is what I did: is I grabbed this little trigger button and I pulled it out and I dropped out four of them. And as you do that. The block control, not the block controller, the UCI script, the UCI itself, sorry, the UCI will innate, will, will create the buttons and will give them default names. And to change them, you have to select it and then come over here 
onto the properties tab and rename the control. And in fact, what I've done is I've renamed them BTN UCI underscore one, two, three, and four. So uh, you might say, well, Perkins, those are, those are still fairly generic names. They are, they're generic, but they're not the generic that it comes out of the box as. Uh, it's good for our purposes. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Uh, and let's open up our UCI script. So now we can actually go back into emulation and let's split our screen one more time so that we can look at how these things work. So we have four buttons, BTN UCI one, two, and three. In fact, controls that BTN UCI one, two, three, and four, they have event handlers and here they are. And they're just gonna do our simple debug print. So one, two, three, four works just like you would think it would work. Um, but remember this, the whole little video is on arrays of controls. And how did we make arrays of controls earlier? Well, we, we hit the little count button, right? One, two, three, four. This is kind of like that first way, isn't it? it? We just have four individual buttons. It would be swell if we could make these an array of controls. We mean for them to be an array of controls, but there's no native way in the UCI here to make them be an array of controls. So what we have to do is we have to be clever. The way that we can become clever, in fact, let's uncomment this and turn this code back on, is, you know what? If the UCI won't give us an array of controls, we'll make our own dang array of controls. In fact, this is exactly what we've done here, uh, here in line 23 is we've defined our own array of trigger controls. And in fact, here they are. We are saying like, let's make a table. Uh, key number one is going to be controls.btnuci underscore one. And two is gonna be button two, and three is gonna be button three, and four is gonna be button four. We made our own array of controls. Thank you very much. Uh, and so guess what? We can indeed now write our iPairs loop. Now, one of the things I want you to think about is now that we have our, um, our array, and we have these event handlers for those buttons, what's going to happen? Now, okay, of course, I, I have it noted here. You probably already figured it out, but if you noodle over it for a second, I want you to think, huh, if I go and, well, I need to hit save to restart the script and activate that code. But if I press BTN UCI one, am I going to get line four? right? Discrete event handler, blah, blah, blah. Or am I going to get line 35, dynamic event handler, blah, blah, blah. In fact, let's cut to the chase. One, two, three, and four. Well, I missed one. Okay. Actually, I missed number two, whatever. It's no big deal. Uh, the point though is, there it is. There's number two. Just so you can see, it totally works. Uh, what has happened here is that we have overwritten those first sets of event handlers with the new event handlers. This is one of the nice things that Lua scripts, proper full-blooded Lua scripts do. So text controller and um, the UCI script, it'll let you do this. You can't really do this in the block controller. It's not because the block controller doesn't write real Lua scripts. It totally does. It just, it has guardrails. It's trying to keep you from messing things up. It's like bowling with the bumper rails. It's a lot harder to throw a gutter ball, but you totally can do a gutter ball here in the UCI script, which means we can also do really fun, interesting things like this. So uh, to wrap things up, what did we learn today? Well, we learned, open that back up. We learned how to make arrays of controls, either by clicking and clicking on the count and getting more of them or by making our own, because you can do that. Um, we also learned how to use them in uh, as discrete uh, buttons. We also learned the superpower of using them with loops. My friends, go use them with loops.
And with that, I'm going to sign off and I'll see you again real soon.